Sample problem. When 600.0 milliliters of water in an electric kettle is heated from 20 degrees Celsius to 85 degrees Celsius to make a cup of tea, how much heat flows into the water? So when we're looking at this, we want to identify pretty much what does in this information give us. So right now here, 600.0 uh, milliliters, that's how much water, that's the volume of water uh, that we're putting into this electric kettle. It's heated temperature, initial temperature here is uh, 20 degrees Celsius and it's increasing to 85 degrees Celsius. It's asking us how much heat flow, right? Is, so that's it's asking us for our Q. So we have Q is equal to MC delta T. Now, we know our delta T. We know our C value. Our C value is a given. So our teacher needs to give it to us or they'll give us a list, some kind of a table, some kind of reference that uh, we're going to refer to. I, I would never ask my students to memorize um, specific heat capacities. Um, so obviously, we do not know our M value and we do not know our Q value. And in fact, this is really what we're trying to find, which means somehow in this question, I must be able to calculate my mass using the numbers that I'm given. And the only thing that I'm really given here is this volume. So let's look at some of our givens. I'll always start off with our givens. So we've got our volume, which is 600.0 milliliters, but it's not useful to us in this equation. Our Q is, which is our, the, the, the really, in fact, what we're really trying to find. So really, this mass is also what we're trying to find, but this is the, the step that we need to do before we actually start. So we've got our C value here for um, our water, right, which is our given. Uh, and our delta T is 85 degrees Celsius subtracted by 20 degrees Celsius, which will give us a total of 65 degrees Celsius. Now, what we need to know is to get the mass, right, think of density. Density is equal to mass over volume. We're given a volume, right, but we do not know the mass. That's what we're trying to find. But if we uh, know anything about water, right, we know that the density, okay, the density of H2O, right, is 1.00 uh, grams per milliliter. So we know that um, our density is equal to uh, one gram for every one milliliter, right? So in other words, if we are trying to convert 600 milliliters to grams using this density of water, right? So what we're doing is we're gonna isolate for M. So we're gonna bring V over to this side of the equation and we're left with mass is equal to density multiplied by volume. So we've got 1.00 grams per milliliter multiplied by 600 milliliters. Um, I'm not going to put the you know to the exact number of significant digits um, when I'm doing my problems, um, just to kind of simplify uh, some of the steps. So we've got mass is going to equal to well here milliliters is going to cancel out. So um, 600 milliliters is equivalent to 600 grams. So our mass now is 600 grams. So now what we're gonna do is substitute into this equation, Q is equal to MC delta T. So Q, we don't know what it is. M, we do know, M is 600 grams, right? Our C value, 4.1 eight joules per grams degrees Celsius, right? This dot here represents multiplied, so grams multiplied by degrees Celsius, uh, which is multiplied now by our delta T, which is 65 degrees Celsius. Now, what's important to, uh, and I tell my students to try to use, keep their units going, because the units are to cancel themselves out. So we've got grams, cancels out with grams, degrees Celsius, uh, uh, cancels out with degrees Celsius. The only set of units that I'm left with is joules. So when I multiply all that together, right, I'm gonna get 163,000 
um, joules is the amount of heat that is actually going to flow into the system. Um, now, I can leave my answer as that, right? Now, the thing is, you want to look at significant digits. Three significant digits is the least number in our question. We've got three significant digits in our answer. So we can leave this as such. We can convert this to uh, scientific notation. So 1.63 times 10 to the power of five joules, right? Also again, three significant digits. Or if we want, it's up to us. It depends on if the question asks you to convert joules to kilojoules, which will give us 163 kilojoules. Okay, so therefore, how much heat flows into the water? Well, 163 kilojoules or 1.63 times 10 to the power of 5 joules of heat flows into the water.